Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. So this is the new 2019 Mac Pro. We've been doing a lot of testing with it for the past couple of months. And this is, if you don't know already, the uh, most basic configuration. It comes with an Intel Xeon 8-core CPU, has 16 threads, can turbo up to 4 gigahertz. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and a 580X AMD discrete GPU. Now, even with these bare bone specifications this thing still costs an arm and a leg just around six thousand dollars from apple now recently i completed a custom pc build based around the amd ryzen threadripper 2950x cpu which has double the cores and threads compared to our eight core xeon processor found on the mac pro so we have 16 cores and 32 threads it also has a faster turbo frequency of 4.4 gigahertz i also put in 48 gigabytes of ddr for memory compared to 32 gigabytes found on the Mac Pro, one terabyte of PCI Express M.2 SSD storage, as well as a Zotec RTX 2080 Super Discrete Graphics Card. Now, the motherboard that we chose is the X399 Professional Gaming from Azeroc, and being a premium grade motherboard, it has plenty of connectivity options for right now and expandability options in the future. The case that we're using for our PC is also pretty special. It's the fan text eclipse p600s the level of build quality and airflow performance is rivaling what we find on the mac pro not to mention that it has sound dampening panels on both the front and back they're also magnetically latching so accessing your internal components on your pc is definitely going to be a lot easier and quicker compared to pulling out the entire outer shell of the mac pro to get access to the internal components on the apple product now, the real kicker of this comparison is the cost perspective of both platforms. Now, our custom PC, including uh, the CPU cooler and power supply and everything else that we talked about, is $2,563.99 based on our Amazon pricing. Now, as mentioned before, we have the bare minimum version of the uh, 2019 Mac Pro with no optional extras, which retails for around $5,999. And that means our PC costs about $4,000. 42% of the price of the cheapest version of the Mac Pro that you can get right now. And with that huge price difference, what we want to also determine is actually the performance differences between these two machines. And before we get into that, we're going to take a look at our sponsor that made this video possible. Now, I never paid much attention to the whole manscaping thing. I have a hard time shaving the face as is, and uh, going downstairs to do a little grooming has always never been my forte, and that was until I discovered the Lawnmower 2.0 from Manscaped. Along with the Perfect Package 2.0 kit from Manscaped, this is a no-brainer way to ensure that you look feel and smell great in all the places where the sun don't shine. Now the USB rechargeable lawnmower trimmer is specially designed not to damage the family jewels. It's water resistant, TSA travel friendly, and is dead simple to use. And for a gorilla like me to have a uh, dedicated uh, trimmer for everything and neck down uh, definitely makes a lot of sense since it's kind of gross to use the same shaver on your face and body. Also being a fairly active person, I get super sweaty in pretty much all areas, and Manscaped also supplied a crop preserver, a deodorant which has anti-chafing properties, which is gonna hopefully help me perform better and make me smell less like a dead horse after a workout. Now, if you're interested in looking and feeling awesome, uh, definitely check out manscaped.com. And if you want 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts, use our promo code MWTech20 for that discount. We want to thank Manscaped for helping us make this content possible. Now getting to the actual performance differences between our custom built PC and the uh, 2019 Mac Pro, what we want to first address is that yes, we are running Windows 10 on our custom built PC. Now you can make a hack and toss version to kind of compete against a Mac Pro. Obviously it's going to be a little more cumbersome, time consuming in terms of getting all the drivers and everything to work. And for the most part, you probably want to base your hack and toss around an Intel based CPU, which is probably going to be a little bit more pricey in terms of getting the cores and threads to the level that you were going to find with AMD processors. But just for simplicity's sakes, we're just going to run Windows 10 on our custom built PC and compare it 
it against Mac OS 10 on our Mac Pro. And we're going to focus on apps that are cross compatible across both platforms in terms of benchmarks and productivity related tasks. Now, firstly, let's get into the performance differences between these two in terms of processors specifically. Now, on the Mac Pro side, we're using the Intel Xeon W3223 8 core 16 thread chip that can turbo up to 4 gigahertz. Now, on Cinebench R20, we're getting a score of 3674 points. And compared to our custom built PC with the 2950X Threadripper CPU, which contains double the amount of cores and threads, we're actually getting slightly past double the performance at 7541 points. Now, moving forward, taking a look at the Geekbench CPU benchmark, which uh, accounts for single core and multi core performance. On the single core side, we are still getting faster performance on uh, the uh, 2950X of 1,098 points compared to 1,069 points on our Intel Xeon CPU on the Mac Pro. And in terms of a multi-core performance, we're obviously going to get uh, a faster score on the 2950X since we have many more cores and threads to play with. We're getting around 13,000 points compared to 8,300 points on our Mac Pro. Now, in terms of our graphics card comparison, as you would imagine, the RTX 2080 Super being a premium grade card is probably going to destroy anything that the 580X AMD card is going to do with our baseline configuration of the Mac Pro it has effectively double the throughput and overall performance. But just to illustrate the dramatic performance differences between the two graphics cards, take a look at the Geekbench OpenCL score on our 2080 Super, which is getting over 100,000 points compared to 40,000 points on the 580X on the Mac Pro and uh, Unigen's Valley Benchmark set to 1080p with all the max out details, eight times anti-aliasing. We're only getting about 41.9 average frames per second on our Mac Pro versus 112 average frames per second on our custom built PC with the 2080 Super. Now beyond that, in terms of the SSD read and write sequential performance, it's actually a little bit of a closer race since PCI Express SSD uh, modules are very similar in terms of overall architecture across Windows based machines and Mac OS 10 based machines. However, there are some subtle differences between the two in terms of interfacing hardware and security protocols. The Mac Pro specifically doesn't use the M.2 connection interface onto the PCB there using their own proprietary connection to the board. The storage is also encrypted via the Apple T2 security chip embedded into the Mac Pro. This makes upgrading these SSD modules fairly difficult without some intervening assistance from Apple themselves. Now on our custom PC build, we're using the Sabrent 1TB Rocket MVME Gen 4 PCI Express M.2 drive. Now the sequential read and write performance on this chip is uh, exceptional, especially on a the Gen 4 slots, uh, which is able to carry up to 5 gigabytes a second in terms of write speeds and about 4.4 gigabytes a second in terms of read speeds. Unfortunately, our X399 motherboard does not support MVME uh, Generation 4. It only supports Generation 3, which is still going to give you fairly fast sequential read and write performance. And in terms of benchmarking the SSDs, it's hard to find one piece of software that is cross-compatible against uh, Windows and Mac OS X. The closest one that I can find is Crystal Dismark on uh, the uh, Windows platform and Amorphous Dismark for Mac OS X. And on our custom build PC, we're getting about 2.5 gigabytes a second in terms of sequential read speeds and about 3 gigabytes a second in terms of write performance. And on our Mac Pro, we're getting around 3 gigs of read performance and about 2.4 gigs of write performance. Now, lastly, in terms of uh, specifically what I do, which is a lot of video editing on Adobe Premiere Pro, we're going to talk about a rendering out and exporting a 4K file that is 10 minutes long on uh, both uh, platforms uh, just using Premiere Pro. Now, uh, yes, if you do use Final Cut X, it's definitely going to be faster on the Mac Pro since it's optimized for the hardware and software, but I don't use a Final Cut. I use Premiere Pro, so that's specifically what we're going to do. It took about uh, 13 minutes and 11 seconds to render out the same project on our Mac Pro compared to 10 minutes and 33 seconds 
on our custom built PC. Now, that's a fairly big difference. Granted, it's not double the performance on our custom built PC, but three minutes is certainly a long time. And if you're going to be using Premiere Pro, don't care about using a Mac OS X and want to get uh, the most out of your money, certainly the custom PC, as we've demonstrated, is definitely the way to go. Now, that being said, in terms of upgradable components, on the Mac Pro, overall build quality, and just the overall engineering aspect of the tower itself, it is a certainly has its place. And if you're looking for a new generation, a Mac Pro, uh, now we finally have one. As you would expect, you're definitely going to pay a tremendous amount of money for it and may not get the same performance as you would expect from a custom-built PC as this video demonstrates. Uh, but besides that, guys, that's really it. Now, we're going to have another video talking about the upgradable aspects of the Mac Pro, what you can upgrade, what you cannot upgrade, so that's fairly important, especially if you're going to get a more budget-oriented, quote-unquote, Mac Pro as we have over here. I want to again a big thank you to Manscaped for making this video possible. As you would imagine, uh, we've definitely spent an excess of $10,000 uh, to make uh, this kind of video and we need all the help that we can get. So we thank our sponsors for making this video possible. And I want to thank you guys for watching the channel, give us a thumbs up and making sure you have notifications turned on. So that way you get our videos once they become available. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.